You know, I kind of think the idea of machines taking over the planet is kind of funny because it would mean that we evolved as biological organisms, dug up a bunch of rocks, taught them how to think, and uh, now they run the place. So if you're getting started as a software developer, then you've probably gone through this phase where you basically don't know how to do something, you Google how to do it, you find an answer on Stack Overflow, and you copy that answer, and hopefully you copy the answer, not the question, and you paste it and see if it will work. Now, you might feel bad if it does work, that you basically just cheated. And if you're in school, then maybe you did, depending on what the rules of your class are. But you might be wondering, is this a bad thing? And is it bad if I have to Google everything that I do? Well, I'm here to go ahead and dispel that really fast in the beginning, that I'm a software developer, I work in industry, and I do it every day. I have Googled the same thing very, very many times. And I've also Googled things I've never done before. And it is perfectly okay, is the first thing that I can tell you. There's nothing wrong with Googling code and finding it on a website like Stack Overflow and using it. But that's probably going to change over time as to how that works with you. Now, when you start out, you might start copying big blocks of code and pasting them and mostly finding that they don't exactly work. Now, what you'll do later on is you'll Google examples and maybe just take a little piece of it, changing things, of course, to suit what you're doing. Now, I kind of want to go into why is this okay and why do we sometimes feel guilty about doing it? After all, it does feel like you're sort of cheating on an exam. You're copying somebody else's work and using it. Well, I think one of the reasons that it doesn't feel good is it's like you're not doing it on your own. You feel like you should be sitting there and somehow just out of your brain comes this code that you can write and it solves the problem. And you might think that the fact that you have to Google it means that you don't really know what you're doing. Now, this is not really the case. And I think to put some perspective on that, I have to kind of go back to what if you didn't have Google, right? A lot of times I think that's what we think too, is I couldn't do my job without Google and Stack Overflow. Well, so here's the thing. In that case, you're sort of blaming yourself for having better tools. And let's kind of think about that. When we go like back in time, let's think about a simple job like a lumberjack. A lumberjack would have to cut down a tree with an ax and then machines were invented to do it. Eventually lumberjacks had chainsaws. Did they feel like they weren't real lumberjacks because they were using a chainsaw now and not an ax? I mean, there might be something to that. There might be a lumberjack that says, my grandfather had to do this with nothing but his hands and an ax. And now I have all these tools. And that is not to say that he's bad. It's more to say that you have an advantage. And what I'm saying is that as a human, you should take that advantage. That is how we get better as a society, is previous generations built tools to make us, the younger generation, more able to do our jobs and more capable to accomplish even bigger things. And there's sort of an exponential effect to this, that the more tools we develop to do things well, the more we do things well, which means we then develop even better tools to do things well. And it just continues to go back and forth and back and forth until we're way, way more effective than our grandparents could ever have imagined. So you can think of Google and Stack Overflow all like that, that there's nothing wrong with using the tools you've been given by your ancestors to your advantage. It makes you better and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, if we do think back when it comes to code, what would somebody have had to do in order to you know, write the code without something like Stack Overflow? Well, they'd have had to look it up in a book. They would have had to take notes. And we still probably, you know, I don't know about you, but I still do take notes at times because it just makes it easier to find the thing that I might know that I'm going to need versus having to jump into Google and hunt it down in the forest. So it's not as though we don't still do the same things, but 
books. I don't know when the last time you looked in a coding book was, and there's a reason for that. Google is just a better tool, but all you're really doing is looking something up. Why is it that if you look up how to do something on Google, it looks bad, but if you look it up in a book, you look, you know, intelligent for some reason. Another thing to consider is that the overall tool set that we're using is different than it was before Google. Things used to be, I'd say, more simple. Things used to be more math-based, and also computers didn't do a whole lot back then. They were more simple machines. You couldn't watch movies on your computer back then. Really, all they could do was display text and store data and, and make calculations, of course. So today, our tool set is different. It, it demands a little bit of a different tool set to be able to use it. And what I'm talking about here is what I call a black box. So what I mean by a black box is something that you use and you're not intended to know in the nuts and bolts how it works. You're of course intended to sort of understand the you know idea of it but you're not intended to dive into exactly how it works piece by piece now the simplest thing i can bring up with that is think of something like a function now you may write a function in code and then you do understand how it works but you may also use functions in code that were just sort of built into the language or some library and you don't understand them and if you feel bad for not understanding them you shouldn't the whole term black box is meant to say you're not supposed to worry about understanding it you're just supposed to use it understand how to use it but not necessarily how it works now, there's good reasoning behind this, that these things have been tried and tested, and you would simply be wasting your time by truly trying to understand them. Now, of course, there are some gray areas to this, that really being able to wield the tool is important, but you're not really meant to open it up and look inside, even though maybe potentially you could. So there are a lot of other things like this. When you write in a programming language, that is also sort of, in a way, a black box, that everything in computing is done with zeros and ones. And then we went to assembly language. The people that started writing code in assembly language were not tasked with understanding how that mapped to the zeros and ones. Now they could if they wanted to, but it was unnecessary for them to do so. Then on top of assembly language, we created programming languages. One of the ones we use today, use today is called C. And to use C, you really don't need to know the actual assembly language that that compiles to, or the binary that that represents, or I guess that would be the other way around. But basically, what I'm trying to say is that you're sort of wasting your time for the most part if you try to get a good understanding for these things, because they were provided to you so that you can be better at what you're trying to do. Now, you could be doing one of many things when you're writing in a programming language. You could be writing an application for somebody out there in the world that needs it. You could be actually trying to make better tools for new programmers or, you know, younger generations to use. And in that way, you would actually be continuing the saga that we see ourselves in, that you then would create black boxes that others would use. I've experienced this at work where I will write code and say, hey guys, this code exists. And the purpose is that they are just able to use this code to better accomplish their tasks. They shouldn't really need to go into it ever unless I mess up. Now, because I'm just one person, it's not quite on the scale as it is with most programming languages. And this is not to say that these things are never wrong, but they could be. It's not impossible, I guess is what I'm saying. Just assume though for now that they're not, and if there is an issue, hopefully you will be informed, and that's probably a topic for another video. So the next thing you might be asking then is what about the university system? So then why can't you Google code on your tests? So this is for a few reasons. The first one is because there are gonna be simple questions on the test that you might just be able to look up, but they're not trying to see that you can look up the answer to that basic truth. They wanna actually make sure that you understand it. 
Uh, another thing is that some of these questions might be simple enough that they could be posted onto the internet where you can literally just find the answer to these questions. So the next is because the universities focus on things that really aren't that Googleable. They're focusing on the core concepts and you might be able to Google something, see something and then try, but that's not the point. You're supposed to actually understand a lot of core concepts and some of those are sort of complex. But because the universities focus on those, Google actually might not really help you in that case. In fact, it could hurt you. I taught a STEM academy and I saw many examples of students that tried to just copy paste their way to finishing the assignment and it tended to end in disaster. Now, another reason for this yet is that the university system is also testing you. They're not just there to teach you, they're there to sort of weed out people, which sounds terrible, but you'll notice that there are classes with a certain percent fail rate and that rate seems to be pretty consistent. They're trying to find the best software developers, the best computer scientists, the best whatever you're doing, not just teach them how to do it. Now, that sounds bad, but it's sort of how it is. So don't worry too much about the university system because when you get to work, it's not gonna be like that. You're gonna be able to Google as much as you want, but what you will quickly learn is you're not really able to Google your way to success. You can Google stuff, you can use it, but you're gonna continually run into situations where what you found doesn't actually suit what you're trying to do, at least not fully. And if you don't have a good understanding of how the code works, you're not gonna be able to do anything with it. So I guess my point in, in this video is to say, don't feel bad about Googling stuff. I, as a software developer, do it every day. It's really no different than looking stuff up in a book if you had a way better version of a book. And the other thing I'm saying is that this is sort of the way things work in society, that we build better tools and then we use those tools to build yet better tools. And uh, hopefully those tools won't take over one day. Have a good night.